Okay, today I thought I'd give you a quick video version of what I put on my blog, a little bit of the political background, some of the visualizations I'm hoping to use in Elite Reclamation. What you're looking at on screen here at the moment is um, Frontier First Encounters, the third Elite game. This is uh, the one that was the, effectively the predecessor to Elite Dangerous. Um, graphics are going to look a little bit clunky by modern standards, but uh, just bear with me because it's kind of useful for us to be able to have a look around using this game as a, a source of resource. It is a, obviously a, a canon uh, game in that regard, so anything that's in here we've kind of got to be uh, aware of in terms of writing a book um, following on from this kind of era. So here we go. Um, so as I mentioned before, this is the Alliance part of space, looking at the galactic map here in Frontier First Encounter. So this is the Alliance space centered around this system here, which is Alioth, uh, where there are a bunch of battles between the Federation and the Empire, um, which um, caused the political creation of the Alliance of Independent Worlds. Um, so if you know your dates, the original Elite we've calculated was set in the year 3125. Uh, Frontier, the second Elite, was set in the year 3200. And this game, Frontier First Encounters, is set in 3250. Um, so about uh, 75, then 50 years has gone past um, between those various different games. We've also been told that Elite Dangerous will be 50 years on from this game. So when we get to it, the year will be 3300. Um, so who knows what other political uh, changes may have happened in the elite universe. So this is Alliance Space. If we go down, which of course is a relevant, uh, a relative uh, condition in space, uh, we end up in the core systems. This is the home of the Federation. You can see there is the Sol solar system, which is where we are. And uh, if I pull that up, fairly familiar uh, thing, obviously with the Earth here, uh, and the Sun and various other planets that we're familiar with. Um, Pluto here. Uh, interesting enough, still a planet um, as it was back in 1995, um, and uh, this never got updated in the meantime. Going back, going further down, we have the Imperial Systems. This is the breakaway faction from the Federation. Many, many uh, years before these stories start, centered around Ashna. This is quite a nice uh, system, uh, a much bigger, brighter star than the Sun, and the habitable worlds are actually not planets per se, but they're moons which uh, hang around um, a gas giant which itself is an orbit around this star. This is where the Imperials hang out. Um, so we have the Alliance, the Federation and the Imperial systems and uh, our action is going to be over here. So we go way out to the left, if you like, of the Federation worlds and the uh, Imperials and we end up with this system here, Wolf 630. And if we look at the map here, we can see that we've got multiple stars, but only in fact one habitable planet, and in the game here, only one habitable space station. Um, so um, this is an interesting system with a number of stars and not very many planets. And I'm going to tweak these a little bit as well. But you'll notice here it says primary M-type red star outdoor agricultural world federation member. And this is true, obviously, for the year 3250. But what I'm planning to do is that um, the political situation around this particular system changes rather dramatically. It's on the edge of Federation space, it's on the edge of Imperial space. I'm going to arrange for some interesting substance or property to be discovered here, which makes this very much a strategic location for both organisations, uh, which they're of course going to be vying over. And that's going to change the political structure for the system rather dramatically, and that precipitates the events of our novel. Uh, now we can have a quick poke around in that system. If I just quickly load up a previously saved game, um, what we'll have in here is uh, this is uh, us aboard the spaceship aboard that space station. Uh, in that system, it's going to launch out. Um, gasp at the amazing graphics! Wasn't 1995 great? Here we go. Uh, let's pop that out. Uh, actually, the graphics are pretty impressive for 1995. To be honest, you won't have seen much else like this yeah, at that time. It is pretty pretty good. Um, right, we've now launched. Let's just shut the engines down to zero. We'll see the space station is behind us, and we're still rotating quite nicely with it. Let's just put the undercarriage up, um, and then we can see ourselves there. And if we're lucky. At some point we'll see the uh, the planet. Let's just get a little bit further away from the space station. It seems to have some kind of clever um, spin technology. Let's set that back to zero. And the space station is now quite happily spinning around there. And somewhere here is 
of the planet. There it is. There's the planet behind us. Okay, so that is the planet where most of the action is going to be taking place in Elite Reclamation. Hopefully it'll look a little bit better than that uh, in the actual game. Now, if I um, quickly buzz up the system map again, but let's do it this time uh, this way. We can see if we zoom out, um, that's our planet, and this is the brown dwarf apparently in which we're orbiting around. Um, let's uh, just lock onto that. Just use this to get us orientated and then we'll stop it again. Let's switch the engines off uh, so we're not moving too fast. So, um, there we can see us flying towards this brown dwarf, which is rather nicely done with some rings um, in this particular system. And if we set the engines on and let it run, we'll see that we'll accelerate quite nicely away from the space station and these rather large vessels that are in orbit around our planet. And there we go, that is landfall with us firing away from it quite nicely. And there are various other bits and pieces in the system as well. So that is Frontier First Encounters. That's the system that we're going to be looking at. That's Wolf 630. I keep saying 360, but it's much easier. It's much easier to say 360 than 630, but there we are. Um, and that is where the action is going to be set. So we are going to be in here, and maybe some of the surrounding systems will also be um, affected. Certainly some of the others will be referenced by the characters in the book. Now I'm going to close that down for a moment. Let's go and run something else which is a little bit more interesting. Certainly a little bit more modern. Uh, this is a tool that I've been using for a little while now called Space Engine. And it's a kind of up-to-date modern um, graphical simulation program. It's not quite a game, it's not quite a tool, I'm not quite sure what it's uh, called, but it's very, very clever. Uh, and I particularly like it uh, for visualising stuff. So let's just have a quick look. I'm going to load it up. You can see here we're actually in orbit of the Earth at this point, and uh, some nice lens flare uh, lens flare effects as you can see. But if I roll this around, um, you'll recognise this planet, I'm sure. Uh, it's where we live, and quite a nice view there of the UK, uh, unaffected by the snow which is plaguing me at the moment. And if we uh, if we zoom in a little bit, I'm sure that. Uh, Will look very realistic. Now this program also uses procedural generation, so it's it's got some ties to Elite in that sort of sense. It procedurally generates terrain and landscapes and stars and, and all sorts of kind of good stuff. But what you can do with this is you can kind of go anywhere. So if we, as you can see here, we're in orbit of the Earth, but if I want to go to, let's say, Saturn, I can just type the name in, I press go to, and zap off we fly across the universe, and there we are in orbit of Saturn, which is quite a handy thing to be able to do particularly if you're after some nice artwork. It renders the sky properly. You can see the background stars, they're all correct. And um, the lens flares a little bit like any. But little things like um, you know, the light of the sun there being obscured as we go through the uh, rings, that's all quite clever. So it's got some good graphical fidelity and we can we can go there. It also allows us to simulate time and all those kind of things. Um, if I pick a um, destination at random, like let's say the Pleiades star cluster, which some of you may have heard of, it's uh, away off in space, and magically we fly through space to get there. Uh, things like the Orion Nebula, they're also represented in here, although the graphics aren't quite finished. Um, oops, that was not right. 742. Okay, we'll fly through space again. And then we get at the moment just a kind of fuzzy blob, but at least it's kind of kind of there and it's it's all done um, properly to scale which is quite nicely done it's uh, very very effective what this means though, of course is we can take a hop to Wolf 630 and actually go and have a look and here we are boom in orbit around the main red dwarf and just wait for the rendering to catch up now what the tool does now we don't actually know um, for real whether there are any um, planets around these systems. Um, the, the stuff in Frontier is complete hypothesis. In fact, although we're able to spot quite a few exoplanets in orbit around stars uh, nowadays with, with some of our advanced telescopes, um, the Wolf 630 system is kind of speculation only at this point, which, which to be honest suits me quite well because um, um, it allows me to do various stuff there and maybe I'll be proved wrong in a few years time, who knows, but uh, for the time being we can hypothesize that there are some planets around there. And that's what this program also does. It allows me to go and visit some hypothetical planets in orbit around this star, and so we can do that. Um, and perhaps here is one. And if we go to that, 
Let me travel across space a bit, but I think I've clicked on... No, I've clicked on the star in the meantime. My apologies, we're now flying through space completely in the wrong direction. Let's try that again. 360. Just stop the hyperdrive, or whatever it is we're using, and fly back to where we were. Let's get that up. There we go. So, let's say we wanted to go to... Well, this is actually the planet I used in my um, graphic. It's a big gas giant. Uh, in quite a close orbit around this red dwarf. They have to be quite close because uh, these red dwarfs aren't very hot so they're nothing like our sun. And so here is that gas giant and over here actually as it goes past you can see the moon that I took the picture from so um, let's pop over there. You'll notice the frame rate here does sort of lag every so often. This is quite a heavy uh, heavy graphics program, it uh, does knacker my laptop a bit even though it is up to running it. And again what's quite nice here is that we can uh, get that, there we are, there's the moon. And if we just orbit around that for a moment, we can look back at that um, uh, gas giant floating in space there and if we just go a little bit further you'll see the red dwarf kind of come nicely into view. So that's fairly similar to the picture I took, obviously the date's slightly different now. Um, and you'll see, I don't know if you can see that too well on the video, but there's a lovely crater here, um, and the, the landscape here has all been procedurally generated by things, so again, similar technology I imagine to what uh, Elite Dangerous will actually be using, so it kind of gives you an idea of the sort of stuff you might see uh, when we eventually go to the system. Now all the planets here are hypothetical, they're not real, um, they could be, might have got it exactly right, but it's unlikely. Um, and unfortunately, um, Space Engine hasn't put any habitable planets in the Wolf, 3, uh, the Wolf 630 system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to another one, um, and kind of show you the sort of things that you might want to be able to see. So here we go, um, oops, I've got to type the other way around, there we go. And off we go, and here we are around a star, and with a little bit of luck, there it is, we can go to a habitable world. And it's going to be coming in, there it goes, let's just switch that off because that seems to kill the frame rate. There we go, this particular planet's got a whole stack of moons which is quite nice. So here's an ocean world, mostly ocean world in a star system, pretty light, pretty much like the one that we were just looking at. You can see some land masses down there, a nice hurricane going on for some unfortunate folks on the coast. Uh, it's Earth-like, but it's not the Earth, clearly. Let's go to another one. And we're going to go to one I particularly like. This is HIP 856. Maybe I need to get rid of it. Oh no, sorry, it's another wolf one, type number one. 1061. This is another wolf star, but not the um, 630 system, but similar. You can see it's another red dwarf. But in this one, we've got a planet here, which is rather interesting. Let's go there. This is a um, Earth like world, but it's really, really close in orbit to. The red dwarf. I mentioned before that red dwarfs are much cooler than our sun, you have to get really really close to them in order to be warm enough. Um, there's a disadvantage of being really close to a, red, a, a star as well, as your planet gets what they call tidally locked, which means it doesn't rotate effectively on its own, it rotates in time with its orbit, which means the sun never changes angle in the sky. So you get this effect whereby one side of the planet is always facing the sun and one side is always facing away and they've modelled that rather nicely in Space Engine because this side of the planet as you can see is totally frozen solid and what you have over the sunlit side as you probably saw as we came in is a massive never ending storm which just kind of goes on forever because it, it, that's where the energy source on the planet is and so any life on here would have to adapt to in this region here constant winds and this here is here complete utter ice forever so some very strange worlds that probably exist out there and these are all based on current kind of planet formation thinking so a combination of all these ideas is what I'm going to be putting into Elite Reclamation as kind of the scenery and this program is really really kind of good at just allowing me to kind of experiment with those sort of things and have a play so um, there we go that's probably enough for now um, that is the sort of stuff I'm 
hoping to do. So hopefully that gave you an idea of some of the uh, input that I'm using for research and the kind of levels that I wish to go in order to make sure that the, um, the, the situations and the planets and stuff are kind of all realistic. So uh, I'll sign off for now and uh, hopefully we'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye.